Amud of Kufnun Gimel Amud Beis. The first word on the line is Kalaacha Yad, about 10 lines from the bottom. This is the sugya that discusses the Isr of Mechamer, which we began speaking about yesterday regarding a person that gets stuck out of Shabbos and he wants to place his money or his packages on top of a donkey to bring for him for Shabbos. So the Gemara explained that Mechamer is also awesome in Atayrim. When it says Leisasa Kol Malacha, and then it says Atto, and later in the Postic it says Behemtacha. And the concept of Muhammad is you're not allowed to lead an animal to bring you anything, to do malacha for you, including when you're doing it bidibur. In any way that you're leading an animal is asan Shabbos. A person that's leading his animal on Shabbos, so and just like every other malach on Shabbos, the same thing, chatos and skila. My time on my rove, the on my crow, because the Pasik says, Loisasa komalacha, ato, and later in the Pasik it says, Ubehemtocha. Behemtoi dum yedide. The halacha of a person that does a malacha himself, and if he does the malacha through leading his behemoth, is the same thing. Dum yedide. Mahu, beshegik chayv chatas, bemezit chayv skila. If you do the malacha yourself, so there's chatas and a skila. The same Allah has applied that Peshegik is a chattas and Bemezid is skila. This is what Rami Bar said. So basically, Muhammad is mamish the same like all the other Lama Tes Malachas. In fact, there's a discussion in the Rishonim regarding this. If it's mamish like the other Lama Tes Malachas and we learn it out from Lysas and Malacha, so then why isn't it counted as part of the other Lama Tes Malachas? And there are two answers given, that Ramban, as I mentioned, talks about this. And the two answers that are given is, one answer is that it's take, the same malacha, the same chumrah, like all Lamates malachas, but because it's something which is being done, not through you directly, it's being done through a behemoth, so it wasn't counted. The Lamates malachas refers to things that you're doing the ma'isa. Here, the behemoth is doing the ma'isa malacha, so therefore it wasn't counted. So that's, the, that's just a sibe why it's not counted in the Lama Tes Malachas. But as far as the Chumrah of Mechamer, it's the same like all the Lama Tes Malachas. Another Pshari says is that it's Be'em is like included in all the other Lama Tes Malachas. Because the Isser of Mechamer is any of these Lama Tes Malachas, you're not allowed to do it through a Behemah. So it's really included already in all the Lama Tes Malachas. Okay, it's similar to the concept of Amir al-Nakhri as far as how you're doing it. But Amir al-Nakhri is not Asr at all. Amir al-Nakhri min Atayra. Amir al-Nakhri, there's no Khiv min Atayra that a guy should uh, over here. There's a din of Shvisis Behemtoi, that's one Alacha. And then there's also Isr of Mechamer. According to most Rishayim, I mentioned this yesterday, Shvisis Behemtoi and Mechamer are two different uh, in Yonim. Shvisis Behemtoi is your Behemah. You have to see to it that your Behemah should not work. Mechamer is nothing to do with whether you own it or not. Mechamer is that you're using a behemoth to do a malacha and you're leading it. Two different things. Most of Shain hold this way. Zakta Gemara Vaita Marave Sarav responded to the statement of Rami Bacham Shtei Tshuvas Bedava. There are two answers to this. Chada, one question is the Chsev in the Taita it says when it comes to the Chiv of Achatos, Taita Achas Yilachem. There's one alacha, there's one din that we learn out from Chatos, La Isa Bishgage. And right after that, it speaks about Nefesh HaShetase B'Yad Rama, which is the Isra of Avidizara. So what do we learn out from this? We had this before a few times. Huksha Kolatayra Kula L'Avidizara. We compare all other Isurim and Tayra for the Chiyav of Chattas to Avidizara. Ma Avidizara David Maise Begufe, just like regarding Avidizara, when you Yuchayv Chattas, it's when a person does an, an Isra, an action, with his own body, Hochanami, by Chil Shabbos as well, Ad Ovid Maisa Begufe. You only Chayv Chatos if you're doing an action with your body. So even if Muhammad is Asim and Atayre, but Hagi Yahayi Chayv Chatos, it's not Daimit to this of Avedizara. Oid, another question on this is, Tman, there's a Mishnah that says, Hamachal is a Shabbos. Bidovar Shechayoven al Shigigose Chatos, while the Daimit is Kila. If you Machal Shabbos, and the Chil Shabbos is in such a matter that there's a Chi of Chatos, and there's a chi of skila. <clears throat> That's the way the mission describes a specific chil Shabbos. The klal, so you see from this Mishnah, the ikimidi, there's a case, the en chayav moshe gigos echatas was a dayna skila. That there's a kind of chil Shabbos where there's no chi of chatas and there's no skila either. Which case is this? Ma'ayniu, lav, the mechamer. Don't you think that this is the case of mechamer? 
that Machama is different than the other Malachis, and there's no Chiv Chatos, and there's no Chiv Skila. So that's another question of what Rami Bachama said. So this second Raya, the Gemara says, Loi, from this Mishnah, it's not a Raya. Tchumen. Ah? I, I skipped something? Right now, the Gemara is giving an answer to its question. And for the Gemara, Loi, Lav Dafke, it's Machama. Tchumen. It could be referring to the Isra of Tchumen, Val Liba de Rabakiva. Rabakiva's opinion is that the Isra of Tchumen is also Menatayra. But there's no Chiv Chatos and there's no Chiv Skila, it's not one of the Lama Tes Malachis. So that's maybe what this Mishnah is coming to exclude. The Havare, or in other cases, Havare, al the Rabbi Yaisi. We had it already a few times before. The Taita writes the Lav, the Isra, the Malacha of Havare separately. According to Rabbi Yaisi, Havare, the Lav Yotzis. The Taita spelled out Havare to tell you that there's only a Lav, not a Skila, and not a Chatos. So that's what this Mishnah could be speaking about. But Mechamer, Maybe you still have chatos, and maybe you still have skila. So this is one often how to uh, what, to explain what Rami Bachami, Rami Bachami said. Now the Gemara brings a second opinion. Rav Zvid Masni Hochi. Rav Zvid he repeated the statement of Rami Bachami differently. Omar Rami Bachami Hamachama Acha Behemet B'Shabes. If you do this, it's sort of Machama leading a Behemet on Shabes. B'shoigig ain't a chayv chatos. If it was done b'shoigig, so you're not chayv chatos. B'meizid chayv skila. But b'meizid, you are chayv skila. So basically he's saying that, like the question that we asked before, you can't be chayv chatos because it's not compared to Aved You're not doing it iser begufe. But b'meizid, you are chayv skila. The Torah does say, Loisasa kom malacha, and it goes even on behemtucha, and it's a chil shabbos, you're chayv skila for this. So Rav asks the question from this Mishnah we just quoted. So the Mishnah says there's the Chil Shabbos and B'Shoigi it's it's Chatos. And B'Mezid it's Skila. What do you see from this Mishnah? So can't you be medayik from here that if it's a case that you're not Chayav Chatos if it was done B'Shoigi so Ein Chayav and Azdayin Skila. So then you're not chayiv for the mezid, the skila. In other words, it's mashma from this, from this Mishnah that these two things go together. If it's a case that you're chayiv b'shoigik chatos, then you're chayiv b'mezid skila. If you're not chayiv b'shoigik chatos, then you're not chayiv b'mezid skila. So the Gemara says, no, not necessarily. Mi ketani ha'in chayiv chulum. Does it say in the Mishnah? Ein chayiv. This diuk that you just said now, that if you're not chayiv chatos, then you're not chayiv skila. Ha'chikama. This is what the Mishnah means to say. This is where you can be medayik from the Mishnah. There is something, there is a case, most of the Malachis, B'Shoigi, it's a Chiyav Chatos, and B'Mezer is Skila. But there is one case, She'ein Chayav and Al Shigigos Echatos. There's no Chiyav Chatos if it was done B'Shoigi, V'Chayav and Al Shigigos Echatos. But still, you are Chayav B'Mezer, it's Skila. My Niyo Mechama. And that's the case of Mechamer, that you can't be Chayv Chatos, because it's not Doymet Avedizara. But at the same time, you are Chayv Skila, because the Torah does use the term Malacha, and it is a Malacha, like all other Malachas. So this is an exception of the rule, that you Chayv a Skila, even without having the Chayv of a Chatos, if it was done B'Shoigik. What's with Maiseh? Kasha? With what? With what? With Kasha of Maiseh. Which? Not a Maiseh. Like so, so according to Rab Zvid, that's taka the reason why you're not Chayv B'Shoigik Chatos. Uh-huh. Right, you're not. You're only be mazed. You have skila. The guy with the chiv skila doesn't have to be doyim et avid zara. The guy with chiv skila, it says in the Torah malacha. So you have uh, skila just like every other malacha of Shabbos. Now the Gemara brings a third opinion, binigaya to this um, halacha of mechamer, and the Gemara first says as a Rava achua the Rav Mari Barachel. So who said this? Rava, the brother of uh, Rav Mari Barachel. Va'amrila, others say, Avua de Rav Mari Barachel, that this Rava was the father of Rav Mari Barachel. So what's the story with this Mari Barachel? So as Rashi brings here, it's a Gemara in Yuvamis, and Taisa speaks about it, Barichas as well. Mari Barachel was known by his mother's name, not by his father's name, because his father wasn't a Yid. His father actually became a Ger later, but his father wasn't a Yid. So therefore he was known by his name, his mother's name, Mari Barachel. But now, we're saying over here that his father was Rava. According to one Gersa here, one Gersa were saying that the uh, Rava was his brother, but according to another Gersa were saying that it was his father. So his father, if so, his father was a Yid. So the Gemara comments about this. 
that the uh, Lishna Basra, according to the second version, that Rave was his father, Kashia, so it's a question on this that it says in the Gemara and Yevomis, Ho de Rav Achshadeh le Rav Mori Barocho Lemanye Bepursit. The Gemara there says that usually we learn out from this that it says by a Melech, by a king, when you appoint a king, Soim Tosim Alecha Melech, that you could only appoint a king, Mikera Vachecho. It has to be someone that's a Yid and not someone that's a Ger or a Ben Gerim. So therefore, it doesn't refer only to appointing a king, but Bechlal, any position of authority that you appoint a person, you should appoint somebody that is a Yid and not a Ger. So the Gemara there says, this Rav Mori Barocho was appointed to a position, and Rav had to make a special hat for this. Rav says that it's allowed because his mother is a Yid, even though his father was not a Yid, but because his mother is a Yid, so therefore it was allowed. Mm-hmm. That's what the Gemara says in Yevamis. Could be, not sure. So the question over here is, why did Rav have to give a special hat for this? According to the second version, his mother was Rachel and his father was Rava. So his father was a, was a regular Yid, so there's no reason for a special hat there. So the Gemara says, Dilme Trey Mari Barachel Hava. So we'll have to say that there are two different Mari Barachels. There's one Mari Barachel that had a father Rava, and nevertheless, for some reason, he was still called Mari Barachel and not Mari Barava. And then there's another Mari Barachel that his father was, uh, was not a Yid, and his father only became a Ger later. And it's that Mari Barachel that Rav had to give a special heta for. This is the Gersa that we have in our Gemara. Now the Gemara is going to go on to say what this Rav has said, and again to the story of Mahamar that we're speaking about. Ra- both Rashi and Taisva say not to be Gairis, this whole Shtikl Gemara that suggests that Rav was the father of Mari Barachel. And the reason is because if you look in the Gemara in Yevamis and in other places, it says that Mari Barachel's father was Isser. His name was Isser. Isser Giyura. He's known in the Gemara as Isser Giyura. His father was Isser, not Rav. And therefore, we're not going to this in the Gemara. They take out this whole few lines here in the Gemara. Okay, but some brother, are... Huh? If it's brother, why would he be called El Shemi and Rav Okay, good, good question. Upon him. So back to the, the statement of what the, the Gemara is saying here regarding Mechamer. So what did he say? So Masni lo, lo He taught this halacha regarding Mechamer, not in the name of Rami Bar He taught it in the name of Rabbi Yechenen, and then a completely different thing. Lifter, and Rabbi Yechenen said that you're totally potter. And this is the final sack. This is how we pass him regarding Mechamer. Omer Rabbi Yechenen, so he said, learned it as follows. Rabbi Yechenen said, you lead your animal to do a malacha on Shabbos, potter miklum. You'd either way, it's Asr, it's Hakam but you're going to be Potter. If it was done B'Shoigig, there's no Chatos. As we said, we compare it to Avedizar. And you didn't do an action with your own body, so there's no Chatos. You're not going to be Chayv Skil either, the Tanan, because of the Mishnah we mentioned before. That if it's a case where B'Shoigig, there's a Chatos, so then B'Meizid, there's a Skila. If it's a case that there's no chattas for the shaygig, ein chayav and alzdoin eskila. So then, but meizid there's no skila. The lav, and now he adds even more. Rabbi Yechinen, you completely potter. The lav, nami loy mechayev. With a lav, you're not even gonna get malchus for being over a lav of lesasa kamalacha to have a le lav shenitin las horas misis bezdin. Because in this pasuk lesasa kamalacha, what does it say in this pasuk? Lesasa kamalacha ato. So the Pasuk Leisasa Kamalacha Atta means that you're going to be Chayiv Misa if you're Taka Mechal Shabbos yourself. Anytime you have a lav that's being written to warn you that you're Chayiv Misa, ain't like an olive. You don't get Malkus for this. So both Rashi and Teisus at a very big Arichas here, as you can see, explain that there's a Chiddush in what the Gemara is saying here. Usually this concept of lav Shenitin Lazarus Misa Bezin is the actual lav that you are over that we're speaking about. Over here, Mechamer. But over here, what the Gemara is saying is, this Pasik, Leisasa Kamalacha, it says two different things in it. It says Leisasa Kamalacha regarding yourself, Atta, when you do a Malacha, and regarding that, it's a Hazharas Mises Bezna, that if you do a Isra Malacha yourself, Yechayev Skila. But then it also says Leisasa Kamalacha, Uvehemtacha, 
if you do the Esau of Mechamer. Regarding Mechamer, there is no Azhar of Mrs. Bezin. As we just said, you're not Chayv Skila. But nevertheless, the Gemara is Mechadish, that even though Leisasa Kamalacha has two different Pirushim in it, but because one of the Pirushim, the Pirush of Leisasa Kamalacha regarding Atta, is Azhar for a Mrs. Bezdin, even the Pshat of Leisasa Kamalacha that refers to Behemtucha, there's also no, there's also no Chiv of Malkis either. Because the lav is considered to be a lav which has a greater stringency of a chi of misa. So there's no malchus in relation to this lav at all. What's the reason in Leisenomo? It's a cloud the Gemara brings many times, the Gemara and Makis. Maybe it's daimit to the concept of kom lebederabmine, such a kind of a concept. It's if there's a chi of misa, so then the chi of malchus, which is much less, doesn't apply. And over here he adds, even according to opinion that holds that even a love that is, that does have a, a chiv of Mrs. Bezdin, it's as hot of Mrs. Bezdin, but nevertheless, you could get Malchus for such a kind of love. But but nevertheless, there's a drasha here, we could see in the Pasuk that you don't get Malchus. The Torah should have written, you shouldn't do Malacha, Ubehemtucha. The word atta is not necessary to say in the Torah. Lesasa kamalacha means you. Why does it have to spell out the word at? Atta lomeli. Ha, so the elamai, what, what it's telling you is, who knew the mechaev? The Torah is writing the extra word atta to say that you could be chayev malkus for this. But for yourself, there's no chiv whatsoever, even not for Malchus, in what, uh, what you did with Mechamer, with this Isra of Mechamer. So that's this. The Torah is making a distinction here. There's atta. And there's behemtucha. Atta, there's the lav that you have malchus for, but behemtucha is not chayev. So this is the conclusion, the way we pass in, that mechamer is taka isim and atayre. It's a malacha and it's a isim and atayre, but there's no chiyuv at all, not even a lav. It's no chiyuv of a lav, no mchatos, no malchus at all. Omar Avonem, so going back to the Mishnah, sorry, missed the, the quote from the Mishnah. Higiyah lechotza achitzayna. Said in the Mishnah that you arrive with your donkey that was carrying your package from Erev Shabbos and you come to a courtyard outside of the city where you could put it down in a private place. So if it's things that the animal is carrying that are not mukta, so you could take it off. The animal is carrying things that are mukta, so you untie the ropes and you allow it to fall to the ground. Omar Avonah says, If the behemoth is carrying glass, Caleb, maybe So you bring pillows, blankets to place below the animal, and you untie the ropes, the and the sacks of the glass kalim will fall down. That's what Rav Huna said, I ate said that you should do, that it shouldn't break. Asks the Gemara, why is this necessary? The kalim that are not mukta, you're allowed to go and take them off on Shabbos and walk off with it. It's not mukta. So over here, it says, klis chuches. They're not mukta. So why can't you just take it off? Why do you have to untie the ropes and then there's a problem that it could crack on the floor? And for the Gemara, Ki ka'omer avhone bekarni domne. Avhone was talking about klishuches, but these were kalim that are used by blood letters, such so kind of pipes or whatever it is that was used by blood letters, and that are kalim that are mukta. It's mukta machmus mios. It has blood in it and a person can't eat it, eat with it, can't use it on Shabbos. So because it's mukta machmus mios, it's repugnant, so therefore it's muktze. The lechaz can't use it at all. So therefore, Rav gives the eitze that if you're going to allow it to fall to the ground, it's going to crack, so you could bring pillows and blankets in order to secure it, that it shouldn't break. Frek the Gemara, another question, but there's still a problem with Rav Huna's eitze. Vaho kamevatl kli mechone. You're being mevatl akeli from being prepared for use. We had this before in the Gemara, in the Sugya of Muktze. When you take a keli that's not Muktze and is prepared for use, and you go and you designate it for something that it makes it Muktze, that you, now you can't move it, that's a problem in Shabbos, with Rabbanon. Rashi here says, what's the issue? The Domni L'Saisa. It's similar to taking something and breaking it on Shabbos, something that you were able to use, and now you put it in the position that you can't use it anymore, it's Daimit L'Saisa. Rashi actually before, when this was brought up, this Indian of Mavat Bakli Mechonai, Rashi said that it's Dami Labaina. That it's Dami Tabaina. The example we had before, when this was brought up, is the person taking a Kaili and using it for, the, uh, uh, for a nair, or the oil that drips out of a nair, that the Kaili should catch the oil that drips out of a nair. And there Rashi said that it's Dami Labaina. So the Pnei Shua explains that it depends what the circumstance is. 
over there, this is a keli that's designated, it could be used to, re to catch the oil. So therefore, you're sort of taking it and not designating it for this use. You're making it mukta, that it becomes tafel to the ner. And that's its designated use now, and therefore it's baina. You're sort of completing its use. Over here, though, you're bringing karam uksasis. What are karam uksasis made for? Pillows and blankets are not made to catch klis uh, that fall down. It's made to, to use to sleep on it. And you're going and you're putting it there to catch these kale and that's saiser. Now you're not going to be able to sleep with it. You're not going to be able to use it. So how could Rav Hone give this eitze? And it says the Gemara b'shlifi zutri. We're talking about small sacks, small packages of these glass kalim, which are from blood letters. And therefore, it's going to be very easy to pull out the pillow and the blanket from under it. And that's allowed. To pull out the pillow and blanket from under it, or under it is not going to be a problem. And therefore, you're not being mevatel the keli, or in this case, the, the, the blankets or the pillows, from being able to be used for, for sleeping on it. Meisvei, the Gemara asks a shayla on this eitz of Ravuna. We learned in a, in a b'raisa, hoisabem te'etunet tevel v'ashashi. It's your behemoth that you brought in on Shabbos was loaded with tevel, which is not, he didn't take meiser from the produce, so it's obviously mukta can't be used, v'ashashi and uh, pieces of glass. So what does it say here in the b'raisa? What do you do? Matar es you have to untie, it's mukta, so you have to untie the ropes of the, that's holding this. V'asak neiflin, and the sacks of the tevel and ashashi is fall down. Even if it'll break, that's the only thing you can do. It falls to the ground, and if it's glass, it breaks. So you see clearly here that it falls to the ground and it breaks. That's what it says in this Braise. But according to Ravuna, why? Why does it have to break? Why isn't there the heter to bring pillows and blankets and to place it under it to be able to uh, secure it that it shouldn't break on Shabbos? And it says the Gemara Hosam Bekulsa. Over there, it's talking about pieces of glass that are not kalim at all. Rashi says these are pieces of glass that will be used for, for certain purposes, maybe for windows, whatever, but it's not, it's not klis choches, it's not any kalim. And if they break, Rashi says, there's no, you're not losing any money. These are broken pieces of glasses. So therefore, in such a case, Chachamim didn't allow this Eitzah, they didn't allow to bring the karim to place below it and then afterwards to pull it out. They didn't allow to bring the pillows and blankets for this purpose because this is no, even if it breaks, you're not losing anything. Teikenami, the raya that we're talking about broken pieces of glasses that uh, even if it breaks, you have no use of it. The Ktani, and there's no hefsit. The Ktani, Dumya the Tevel. The Braise brings the, the, the glasses, Vashoshi is the pieces of glass together with Tevel. Ma Tevel de Lechazile, just like Tevel is produce that you didn't take Maisa and is not fit for you Bechlal to eat. Ah, Fochanami Lechazile. Or the, the Ashoshi is as well, we're not talking about Kalim of glasses, we're talking about pieces of glasses that you have, you can't use it at all. So the Gemara asks if that's the Pshat here that it's already broken pieces of glasses. So, what's the Chiddush that the Braise is saying, even though it's going to break? If it's going to break. You're saying that it's already broken pieces of glasses, so it makes no difference. So what's the Chiddush that the Braise is saying, even though it's going to break? Mao the Tame answers the Gemara, I would think, that there could be a Hefzid Muet, there could be some, a little bit of a damage in this, even though the usual damage that you have when a glass keli breaks, where it's a, it's a big damage. Now that a real keli got broken, that's a real damage, is not shy here. But still, there could be a half said muet when the glass breaks, so there are some small pieces that break, but even kazed, that now you won't be able to use it at all. And before, maybe you would have some kind of a use of it, so there's a half said muet. So I would think that for that purpose, they would allow you to bring the karim exosis to secure it that it shouldn't break. Kamash Malan, that for the half said muet, they didn't allow to do this. The eitz of Rav Hone is only in a case where you have a bigger hefzid, and then they said you can secure it with pillows and blankets. Tanya, we learned in Abraham, said Rav Shimon ben Yochai Yomer, Hoi sebem toy tu no shliv shel tvua. You had your behem loaded with a uh, sack of tvua of, of grain, and you want to take it off on Shabbos. Meniach roishay tachter, so you place your head. You can so it's mukta. It's not you can't eat it on Shabbos. And it's mukta. So if you want to move it off, and you, when you, if you untie it and it doesn't fall off by itself, so how do you take it off? You have to do it in a way with a shinui. You place your head below the sack, and you pick it up with your head to the other side, and it'll fall off on its own. This is the Allah we had before, when get to Mukta, that if it's done, so then it's allowed. Talk to Gemara a story with, uh, with uh, Rabbi Gamliel. 
Hoysetuna dvash. Rabbi Gamliel's donkey was loaded with honey when it came in on Shabbos. ad Matzah Shabbos. He didn't want to unload the donkey until after Shabbos. And he left it like that the entire Shabbos. The Matzah Shabbos, what happened? Matzah Shabbos, the donkey was carrying this load of honey on its back, a whole Shabbos. Mesa, the donkey died. So the Gemara questions this conduct of Rabbi Gamliel. How did he allow this to happen? Why did he do it this, this way? We learned in the Mishnah, Kalim Anitolim. You're allowed to take off Kalim that are not Muktza on Shabbos. So if the sacks of honey on the donkey, honey is not Muktza, why didn't he take <coughs> off the honey on Shabbos? And for the Gemara, Keshehidvish. The case of here is that this honey actually went sour. So therefore it was Muktza. We're talking about honey that went sour. So what does it fit for? Why was Rabbi Gamliel bringing this in? Should have left it where it is. Why Bechlal is he carrying this in on Shabbos with the, with the donkey? And for the Gemara, it is useful for something. Like the Gamli. It's used to, uh, to, as an as a ointment for the, for the camels. For any wounds that they have, it could, it could be used. It's beneficial for, the, for their wounds. So it could be used for something. But why does he have to keep it on the donkey the whole Shabbos? Let him untie the ropes, like the Mishnah says. And it will, uh, the, the, the sacks of the honey will fall down on its own. And says the Gemara, no, he couldn't do that. Mitzter Ziki would have burst open, would have broken open the, the baskets that the honeys were, honey were in, would have broken open. So it would have, uh, would have completely spilled out. Why didn't he do like Rav Huna said? to bring pillows or blankets and place it below and it will fall and it won't break open. He says the Gemara, but still mitnafi. The, the pillows and blankets are going to get dirty from the honey. And the issue is that he's mevatel keli. Now these pillows and blankets are dirty and he can't sleep with them, he can't use them. He's taking something that was, uh, you were able to use and now it can't be used. So once it gets dirty, you can't sleep with it anymore. It's full of honey. So you can't say the Eitzah that it said the Gemara before, you could just pull it out. Even if you pull it out, it's dirty, you can't use it anymore. So therefore, he left these honey that was sour, that was muktze on the camel the entire Shabbos. But the Gemara still asks, Still there's is an Isra of Tzar Balachayim. That should be Deiche, the Isra of muktze, and he should be allowed to take it off in Shabbos. And for the Gemara, Kesovar Tzar Balachayim de Rabbanon. Rabbi Gamliel's opinion is that Tzar Balachayim is only Midrabanon and therefore they weren't Deicha, the Isra of Muktzah in this case because of Tzar Balachayim. Yeah, a good question. Hanami. Good, but even the Isra but even the Isra to take off the honey is also only a Isra Midrabanon because of Muktzah. So you have one Midrabanon against another Midrabanon. And therefore he says that Hacham will not matter the Isra of Muktzah in this case for this purpose. Okay, okay. Say that. So, according to the Maskan of the Gemara, you understand that we don't paskin like this whole thing because the halacha, the ma'isa is that we paskin tzar b'lachayim is da'iraisa. So therefore, it is uh, tzar b'lachayim will be da'ichi even in a case where it's muktzim mamish and there's no eid l'chayr, there's no eitzah because you're going to be mivat l'chayim me'chanei but we paskin tzar b'lachayim da'iraisa so if you, there's a tzar b'lachayim you're allowed to remove from the animal the packages that it has in it. Of tzar b'lachayim da'iraisa. Modern Bab Metzia. Remember now, the Gemara there brings a. Ah, the Pasuk and Parshas Mishpatim in the Gate of Aved. I don't remember right now, but the Gemara is. You have to untie and it has to break. Huh? You have to untie and it has to break. Correct. Lachayda. Yeah, but Sabal Chaim Day Raisa. Zog the Gemara Abaye Ashkechele Le Rabbe, the Komeshaf Shefle Le Brei Agabe de Chamra. Abaye noticed that Rabbe was playing with his child. What was he doing? He was sort of rolling him down on the back of a donkey. Like a, it's like a sliding pan on the, on the side of the donkey or on the back of the donkey. On Malay, so Abai said to Rabbe, You're making use out of an animal. One of the Xeris of Chazal that is discussed in Masech de I don't know if you had it yet in the modern Masech de Shabbos, is that there's a Xeris not to use Balechayim on Shabbos or Yom Tif. The reason is because if you use Balachan, you ride on a behemoth, you're going to come, you can come to pull off a twig from the tree or a branch from the tree to use it to, as, as reins or to, to hit the animal to be able to go. So how are you using a Balchai on Shabbos? So he answered him, I'm, alay, it's in him. I'm only using the back or the side of the animal. But it's dodd in le gozru. The gzayde was not does not apply to using the side of the animal. Le gozru bu rabbana. Mino 
But where do I see that the gzeda doesn't apply to the sides of the animal? The tnan, because the Mishnah says, matir, or the Bach adds, matir hachavolim va'asakin leiflim, that you untie the ropes of the animal when it has these packages, and the sacks fall down on their own. So how are you untying these sacks? My love, don't you think, bechever gewalki, that uh, the way these sacks are tied is you have these saddlebags that are tied together on both sides. So these, the, the packages on both sides are tied together. And the only way to untie them is to untie these two bags from each other. And in order to be able to do that, you have to lean on the animal to be able to untie it. So by untying these sacks, when it's muktzen, you allow it to fall down, but you have to lean on the animal. So you could see, so you see here that you are allowed to lean on the side of the animal to be able to do this. The avalud zdodin, it's zdodin like gazer burabana. So here I see that for this, using the side of the animal, there's no gzeira. So the Gemara says, no, loy, it's not a raya. Bechever a gevalki. You could say a glavki. We're talking over here about the sacks that are attached to the animal, not the way saddlebags are attached, that they're both attached together, and you have to lean on the animal to untie it, but it's, it's attached with a certain clasp in a way that you could just un, untie this clasp and it'll fall down without even leaning on the animal. Or another option, the Gemara said, so you don't have to lean on the side of the animal. Inami belechse, or lechse, which is some kind of a clip that ties together the uh, package to the animal, but uh, you just untie this clip or open up this clip and it falls down. So there's no ray from our Mishnah to this halacha that even though they made a gzeda not to use an animal on Shabbos, but zdod in the side is allowed. Okay. Uh-huh. Of what Rabbi did, correct? But the Gemara now has another question what Rabbi did. Eisve, question is, there's another kind of gzeda, similar gzeda where Chacham did not allow, just like the Chacham made gzeda not to use a balchai, Chacham also made gzeda not to use anything that's connected to the ground on Shabbos, also because you might come to pull something out. So Eisve, Shtayim, Bideyodom, Benigeta, the Allah of Sukkah. So it says by a sukkah that if you have two walls that a person builds, two walls, and your third wall is a tree. Ksheira, it's a kosher sukkah, you have three walls, but you can't go on to it and you can't go on to the sukkah on Yantiv because you're using a tree and the tree is Mukhubal Aretz. That's the, this is the Xair of Chazal, not to make use of something which is Mukhubal Aretz on Shabbos or Yantiv. So the Gemara now explains its question. My love, don't you think what's the pshat over there? How is he using this tree? The chok bei bi'ilon. What he's doing is he has two boards of walls that he makes a hole in the tree and he attaches these two boards to the, to the tree. So he's not actually using the, wall, the, the tree itself as a wall. At this point, the Gemara is not thinking that he could use the, uh, the tree itself as a wall. He's just attaching his other two walls to this tree. And if so, what's happening over here? The avalud's dodden. He's only sort of using the side of the tree. He's just using it as a support for the other walls. Utzdadin asurin. So over here I see regarding this iser of using something that's mechubel lekarka, that even using the sides of it is also asur. So the Gemara's question is, we should compare and say the same thing when you get to the iser of riding on an animal, using a behemoth on Shabbos, that that, that iser includes the sides as well. And says the Gemara, that's not the case over there. What is it talking about? The kafye li'ilon. He, what he took is, he took a tree and he brought down, he lowered down the branches of the tree. So Rashi says, Moshe, you have two trees that are near each other and you bring them down and now you have a thick uh, wall sort of of these branches. And then you, you support the schach on top of it to keep it down. And so therefore you're using the uh, trees not only as a wall, but you're also supporting the schach on top of, this, of, of these trees to keep it down. So that's why it's not allowed. So you're actually not using the tzdodim of the tree, you're using the tree itself as a wall. The kameshamish bilon, you're using the tree on Shabbos. Okay, so that's, it's not tzdodim. If that's the case here, what is it saying? The Sefer of this Mishnah, if you have three walls that a person builds, and you only have one wall that was made from a tree, so then it's kosher and you're allowed to go into the sukkah on Yom Tif. But why are you allowed to go in? If what he did was he brought down the branches of a tree and then he, le- he leaned the schach on top of these branches, so then uh, what happened? 
Am I, sorry, I just lost the place over here. Am I, why are you allowed to go into this in Yomtev? You're still using something which is Mechobah Lekarka on Yomtev. You're leaning your schach on top of these trees that you brought down. So either way, you're, you're using something which is Mechobah Lekarka, whether it's, you have two walls that were made Bidei Adam, whether you have three walls that were made Bidei Adam, what, what difference is it? The El, Am I, Nusra, the Gemara says back, so what are you going to say? You want to go back to the original pshat we said? Zdodin Asurim, we're talking about a case, not that he's bringing down the trees and he's leaning his, the schach on the trees. He's using just the side of the tree. In other words, he's making a hole in the tree and just supporting his walls on the tree. And Zdodin Asurim, and that's also. Sof, sof, but the question you ask now is not answered. So if sof, am I oil no biyomtif? Why in the sefer of this Mishnah, when he has three walls bidei adam, is he allowed to go in, uh, into this in yomtif? He's using the tzdodin of a tree to support his walls. And how could you use that in yomtif? So either way, you're going to learn this Mishnah. There's a problem over here, when you get to the pshat of the sefer, that when you have three walls, you're allowed to use the fourth wall for the sukkah and yantiv. The person is making use out of something which is mechobah lekarka. Elo, says the Gemara, so what do you have to say? What's the pshat over there? Hosom begavze parsachna. Over there, what we're talking about is, he's not bringing down the trees and then leaning his chach on top of the trees. We're talking about a tree that has a very thick... Uh, branches without bringing anything down. It's sort of like almost like a bush maybe, where the, where the tree as it is has a lot of uh, uh, whatever, a big thickness, branches and thickness to it. The Elon Gufe, the tree itself as is, without bending it down, Daifen Baal It's just, it's, it's a wall. It's just a wall over there and he's not, he's not leaning his chach on top of it. Okay, so that's the Pshad of here. So what's the difference between the Reisha and the Sefer? In the Reisha, he's making use out of the third uh, wall. Why is he making use out of the third wall? Because he needs the third wall for the kashras of the sukkah. In the, in the Sefer, though, he has already three kashra walls. The fourth wall he's, he's using from the, what's mechobah lekaka, but he doesn't even need it, Pachlal. He's not even leaning his chach on it either, because it's, it's just there. It's just there as a fourth wall that he doesn't need, Pachlal. So therefore, you're allowed to go into it on Yantif. Zog to Gemara Vaiter. Take an ami diktani because it says there in the Mishnah, Zea klal, call ilu, or call the Bach is great, is call she ilu, you not le ilon, you choil lamoid, if you take away the tree and the, the sukkah could still stand, oil and lobby yomtif. So then you can go up to it on yomtif. Shmami no, so I see from here that if, that is, if you take away the, the tree, and the wall, the schach that is, could still stand, so you're allowed to go up in a yomtif. So that's what the safe is talking about. He has a wall of a tree, and the schach is not leaning on it. The schach doesn't need it. And therefore, you're allowed to go on, on, onto it on yomtif. Okay, we'll stop over here. Shmami no. So this is the raya. Yeah. Okay.